Hey everyone, it's Hal, and today we are going to talk a little bit about amplifiers and how you figure out what they do and to explore them a little bit. Now I'm going to be using a crate amp. It is a GFX 15. I bought this back in 1999. This is pretty old and it's been modified a little bit for me, so it's not exactly like the original amp, but I'm going to take you through it and show you what you can do to your amplifier. Now this is not a modeling amp, we're not talking about that. This is just a basic amplifier that has volume and tone controls, it has some onboard effects, and it has a distortion channel. And we'll talk about how to explore all of that and what you can do to figure out your amplifier. Now I'm going to be using this amplifier, this is what it looks like, and we'll zoom in really close here and I'll show you these controls. This is the power switch right here. This light will give you, see when you turn it on, then you get um, an on light. This is an external speaker. This is a headphone jack. You can plug headphones into it and you can listen to uh, the amp without the speaker being on, which is really great. This right here, it says mode, it's got DSP. And what that means is these are onboard effects and there's different kinds of effects. And I've got it in the off position right now, it's the bypass position, but you can have reverb, a couple of different reverbs on it. You can have echo, you can have chorus, two different kinds of uh, chorus. There's a flanger on it. And then this right here, this is the equalization section or the tone controls and it says low, mid, high. And this is relating to the low tones in the guitar, the mids and the really high tones. And it's got a dial right here. And I can turn it to zero or I can turn it up to 10. And I've got these three controls at five and that is called a flat setting. So I'm going to start with a flat setting. I've got a level control. This is the volume control. It says right here clean, okay, so I can turn it to zero and I can turn it to 10. I've got a marker right here because that's the level that I was using it at in a concert that I was in and I really like this level, it sounds really good. This is an overdrive switch, you push that down and then you get this overdrive channel and it says gain and level. Now the level is a volume control and the gain is how much distortion and what you're doing is you're overdriving the preamp, so to speak, at least that's what we used to do in tube amps. So you can turn it down or you can turn it up. Now I've got a couple of different uh, things marked here, uh, my favorite positions for this particular amp. I've also got a volume position marker where I like to put it. Now I made these markers myself, they're just label material and I just uh, it has a sticky back on it so I know where to turn it immediately without having to guess, you know, where do I want that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the guitar into the amplifier before I turn the amplifier on. This is always a really good way to go. That way you don't get any popping noises from the speaker and it doesn't blow the speaker. Another thing you can do is just unplug it like this, okay, and then plug it in while it's on. But please do not unplug your guitar with it being plugged in and turned all the way up. That's not a good idea. All right, here we go. I'm going to turn my volume down. I've got a flat setting on my lows, my mids, and my highs. I've got my uh, effects completely off, so they're being bypassed. I'm going to turn up my volume all the way, and there is no sound coming out. That's okay. Let's turn it up a little bit and see what we get. got this uh, on about one and a half, between one and a half and two. It's actually pretty loud. So now let's turn the highs all the way up and see what it sounds like. Let's turn the mids down and the lows completely down. Now what I'm doing is I'm exploring these knobs, I'm trying to figure out what it sounds like when everything is up or down. Now if I turn everything down, you notice there's hardly any sound coming out. That's because these are actually volume controls for the highs, the mids, and the lows. 
All right, let's turn the mids all the way up and see what it sounds like. Okay, that's what it sounds like. Let's turn the mids down and turn the lows all the way up. What happens if I turn the highs all the way up? I've got the lows and the highs all the way up and the mids completely off. Now let's do the opposite here, the lows all the way down, the mids and the highs up. Now you'll notice I haven't touched anything on my guitar. I also have both of my pickups here chosen in the mid position, so it's a, like the middle position, so I'm getting both pickups. And now I'm getting an idea of what that sounds like. Now let's go to a flat setting again. Everything is on five. Now I want to let you know that if you turn everything up to seven, everything, you know, the lows, the mids, and the highs, it's going to sound the same as everything on five. It's just going to be louder. So that's why I'm turning it to five. So if I want to boost the lows, I can boost the lows and I can cut the highs a little bit. Right? And I can, I can actually customize my sound any way I want it. I can boost the mids a little, cut the lows. It's okay. How about if I do this? So I'm now I'm starting to get something I like. Now everybody's going to be different. You're going to have a different understanding and a different feel uh, for what you want personally. So let's see. Let's go ahead and put the, everything back to flat on fives and let's turn on the distortion and see what we get. <laughs> Okay, let's turn the gain all the way down. Nothing, right? Let's see. Let's turn that level down a little bit. Turn all the gain all the way up. So I'm just getting an idea of what it sounds like here. Okay, that was not a song. It was just improvisation. So I'm just messing around here. This is my volume control, my level right here. This one, this level, when I'm on this channel, the overdrive channel, nothing, uh, the level is not working, but the lows and the mids and the highs work. Okay, that works, but um, my volume on the clean channel is disabled. So that doesn't make any difference. Okay, so I've explored it now. I've turned my gain all the way up, my distortion all the way up. I've turned it all the way down and see what it sounds like. One thing you can do is that you can, you can turn down your volume. It's a passive volume. You'll notice 
as I go down in my volume. I can actually cut the distortion by turning down my volume. That's because what I'm doing is I'm squeezing the signal off. And so less signal is going to the amplifier. And so that's another way I can actually cut my distortion a little bit. And of course I could always mess with my tone control. Or my pickups. That pot's a little dirty, isn't it? So that's what you do. You turn everything up, your volumes all the way up. Now I could do that, you know, I mean I could turn my volume all the way up like this and see what it sounds like, but I don't need to do that right now. I have people in the other room and they might go, whoa, what is he doing? That's what you do. You max things out and then of course you can you can check out the different effects that you have on your amp. Oh, there's an echo. Down a little bit. That's a slap echo. Let's turn that down a little bit here. Let's see what this sounds like. That's my flanger. Okay, let's turn it to. Chorus one. Chorus two. three, a little heavier. Reverb there, another reverb. And that really heavy reverb. The thing about this amplifier is that I really can't combine, like I can't have echo and reverb at the same time on this particular amplifier, but I can put another effect on it if I want to. So there you go. This is um, just something that you can do with your own amplifier. Many inexpensive amplifiers don't have effects on them. They just have these other uh, knobs, something similar to this. And uh, I've seen inputs on modern amplifiers where you can actually input music and play along with it and that kind of thing. <laughs> So there you go. That's what you do to your amplifier. You just max the knobs out, see what you can do, uh, see what each knob does separately, see what they do in combination, uh, play around with your volume knob and your tone knob, play around with your pickups on your guitar separately and see what they do individually, working with the different knobs. Uh, it just takes some exploration to figure out what your amp does with your guitar. And also, having a good chord is important. It's, uh, some of the really cheap chords, I mean, that you get free, you know, when you buy a, a new electric guitar or something, especially if you buy a really inexpensive one, um, they'll last maybe six months and then they're dead. So get a good chord. They, uh, they're worth it. Uh, you know, my chords have been around for 10, 15 years, 20 years. And then when they eventually break, you either fix them or you throw them away and buy a new chord or something like that. Well, anyway, thanks for being here. My name is Hal, Quail Studios Guitar. Appreciate you being here. If this is your first time, you can subscribe. And then, of course, you can ring the bell like that and get notifications about when we upload new videos. Usually, I do a song video and a cover, you know, on a song uh, every week or two. And I love doing that um, yeah. for my students. And then I had a student ask me, you know, several students want to know about amps and how do you work with them and how do you get started and what do you look for and that kind of stuff and about guitars. 
So check out my other videos. I have playlists about all kinds of different things. All right, thanks for being here. We'll talk to you later. Is there anything else you need to talk about? Oh, I do have a Patreon page, and you can get lead sheets and music that I publish over there for any level of patronage. Thanks for being here. Talk to you later. Bye.